Hey YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here and uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different than normal. Uh, today we're in the kitchen and uh, one of the things that my wife and I decided several years ago, uh, we lost a couple of dogs to cancer and we're really under the belief that uh, the reason we lost those dogs was uh, due to what's currently in dog food today. So we decided when we got our next dog, we were going to only feed that dog uh, the best food available and make sure it didn't have grain products or byproducts. And so we've tried to do that. But one of the things that's easy to overlook is the treats that you feed your dogs. And when you go to buy pet treats, you'll see that they're not only very, very expensive, but if you look at the ingredients list, you'll usually see that there's a lot of really bad things or things you don't even recognize in there. Uh, so today what we're going to do is, is put together a short recipe. And uh, this recipe is uh, for dog treats. And it's going to be a more natural recipe. And it's going to be something that the dogs really like. Now, uh, where it's a little bit different from usual, uh, usual is uh, my wife and I picked up a Harvest Right freeze dryer uh, back in June of last year and we've been spending the last six months or so trying to figure out how to make it work and we've turned to the internet we've turned to a lot of other youtubers and uh, we've gotten a lot of really good recipes but one thing that seems to be lacking on the internet is pet treats so uh, this is going to be a recipe that I'm going to put together and if you don't have a freeze dryer you can take this recipe and modify it slightly and I'll show you how to do that later on and you can uh, cook it in the oven. Now what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go through the initial uh, stages of putting this together and then we're going to freeze dry it and that way it's going to make it more stable so that the uh, pet treats don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, we are going to be putting meat in, in uh, to this recipe and we're going to be using beef liver and um, I've done this before with both beef liver and I've done this with chicken liver and both of those work the same. I think the beef liver goes a little bit farther in the recipe. Uh, the dog likes both the chicken liver and beef liver either way. Uh, we are going to be cooking this in a crock pot. We're going to pre-cook it in the crock pot. Now, if you don't have a crock pot, you can boil it on the stove. Um, if you've never cooked liver before, you're going to find when you boil it, it doesn't smell very good at all. Uh, if you cook it with onions in a frying pan, it smells excellent. But it, when you boil it, it just doesn't smell good. So we're going to get it started in the crock pot. And then we're going to take the crock pot out to my sunroom and we're going to cook it out there so we don't have to deal with the smell. Now, in addition to the beef liver, uh, you're also going to need a can of pumpkin. And uh, we tried to find organic pumpkin. It's a little bit harder to find, but uh, just it, read your pumpkin label. Uh, this one says on the side of it, it's Libby's pumpkin and it does say no GMOs or no genetically modified organisms in there. Uh, but if you look at the ingredients, you can see uh, pretty much what's in there. And you want to get one that uh, the ingredients, like it says here, hopefully you can read that, it just says pumpkin. So there's nothing else that's mixed into this. And then you're also going to need a little bit of bone broth. Since we're going to do beef liver, I'm using, uh, I'm not, uh, sorry, not uh, bone broth. This is beef broth. Um, so you want to find a good brand of that. Also check the ingredients label uh, to make sure it doesn't have a bunch of unrecognizable items in it too. So those are the thing, three things that you're going to need to put this together. And uh, well, let's go ahead and start the process. So when you open your liver, depending on whether uh, you picked it up fresh at the store or frozen, uh, you're going to see that it usually comes uh, in one package, uh, in individual packages like this. And uh, this happens to be um, four packages. And I think that this was about $3, where you compare this to pet treats. Uh, for a box of pet treats, you may have you know, anywhere six, seven, you know, or, or more dollars involved. Uh, we're going to get quite a bit out of uh, what we've got here. And we've got, like I said, $3 for the liver. The pumpkin was, uh, I think, probably a couple dollars for the can. 
Um, and then the uh, beef broth, that was a couple more dollars. But uh, beef liver is usually pretty bloody. And uh, when you boil that blood, it's going to kind of congeal and form big globs of goop in the top of uh, the pot. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take our beef liver out of the package and we're just going to give it a real quick rinsing just to get as much of that stuff off of there as we can. Uh, and then we're just going to take it and drop it down into our pot. And um, not rocket science. It's going to be uh, pretty easy to do. And we're not going to add the pumpkin to this yet. We're not going to add the beef broth to this yet. Uh, we're going to let uh, this liver cook up just in plain water first. I've not added that to the crock pot yet, but uh, we'll get to that in just a couple minutes. And uh, I would suggest while you're doing this, um, rather than just making a very small batch because it is time consuming, uh, go ahead and get yourself a couple packets of liver and um, make it go as far as you can. I'm just going to do a single batch for right now. So we've rinsed off as much of that as we can. This stuff is kind of like fish. It's very slippery to hold on to. But uh, so we've got that part done. And now it's just a matter of adding water. And we don't need to add a lot of water. We just need to uh, cover up the meat that's in there. And I'm going to try to go probably about an inch above that. And now, now all we have to do is put the cover on that. Uh, we're going to start it on high and let it go for uh, at least three or four hours. We want to make sure that that liver is cooked thoroughly. And then we'll come back and uh, finish her off. Okay, a few hours have passed and so our uh, liver is completed, uh, or the cooking has completed, but uh, one of the things you'll notice is there will be like a skim coating, and that's all that uh, blood and other material that's come out of the meat. Uh, so we're going to pour that into a strainer and just kind of rinse all of that off. Uh, once we've got it rinsed off, we're going to let this meat cool down just for probably 15 or 20 minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and chop it up into smaller pieces. It may be hard to get all of that off, uh, so we're not even going to try to get all of it. We're just going to try to get the most of it. Okay, uh, that looks a lot cleaner and ready to go. Okay, well, while the liver was cooling, I went ahead and opened the can of pumpkin and spooned it out into a bowl. I also measured out about a cup of our beef broth. So what we're going to do now is simply chop up the pieces of liver into smaller pieces. And um, this is going to uh, almost fall apart uh, if, it's, if it's completely cooked. And that's what we want it to do. We want to just make very, very small pieces. Um, we're going to then uh, simply mix the chunks of liver in with the pumpkin. And then we're going to slowly add some of the broth to it. Uh, and uh, we're going to stir it up as we're um, mixing the broth in to create kind of a slurry. And uh, we want it to be uh, kind of a watery slurry, but um, I, I don't really know uh, how to describe the consistency other than a slurry mix. Uh, we're going to then uh, just put this into some molds. Uh, those molds will then be uh, frozen in our regular freezer 
overnight and then uh, tomorrow morning uh, when after the thing is frozen we'll pop them out of the molds and then we'll uh, put it in the freeze dryer and let it run through the freeze drying cycle so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this part right here now if you wanted to just cook the liver and uh, the, you'll find that your dog will take it no problems at all uh, the problem is going to be uh, keeping the liver. Um, I mean, you could keep it. It may last for a week or so in the refrigerator. You definitely don't want to give your dog this much liver all at once. Uh, that probably, they'd probably like it, but it probably wouldn't be a healthy decision. Uh, so that's where the freeze dryer comes in. We're going to be able to put this into molds and uh, keep it long term. Uh, seal it up in mylar bags that do not have to be refrigerated even though there's meat going to be in here and uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, by putting it into the molds that I'll show you in a few moments you'll find that uh, it'll be the perfect dog size treat uh, for you know one or two treats a day it should be a good portion to uh, give your dog I think they'll be happy with it and it'll be far healthier than any of the other uh, dog treats that you might find on the market okay all of the chopping is done and uh, I did switch to a bigger bowl this meat pile was a little bit bigger than I uh, thought it was gonna be uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, scrape that off in, in with the pumpkin and now if you were doing this if you don't have a freeze dryer to use and you were wanting to uh, cook this in the oven what you would do at this point is you would make more of a batter you would add uh, instead of making it uh, with a liquid consistency you're gonna have to add some flour into it and make it into a paste that you'd be able to work with and uh, form some patties uh, we're gonna go in the opposite direction though we're gonna make a slurry and uh, that's gonna allow us to uh, pour it into the molds and so we're just going to go ahead and mix everything up with uh, um, beef broth in there. And so we've got the meat, the pumpkin, the broth, and we're just going to kind of mix this as evenly as we can. And while the camera was off, uh, Jenny did come into the room and start turning on exhaust fans and everything, uh, saying that the smell of the liver was terrible. <laughs> so. Uh, that is exactly why uh, I cooked it outside. So if you like the smell of liver, uh, you might enjoy that. Yeah, I'm sure the dog has been enjoying it, but um, yeah, it's not uh, not something that uh, you want to do and have company come over. We'll just put it that way. Okay, so I think we've got this. Um, it's not too thin. Uh, but it's uh, not too thick either, so it should go into the molds nicely. Okay, so the molds that we're going to use are nothing more than uh, candy molds or molds you might pick up to make uh, gummy bears. Um, we've used these before to make uh, freeze-dried yogurt drops, and they come in uh, a variation of sizes and shapes. You see we've got some um, hearts and some s squares and some stars. Uh, in addition, uh, we've got some larger ones here. These are jello molds, uh, Ohio State Buckeye jello molds. And so we're going to just go ahead and spoon uh, the uh, slurry mix into this. Now, if you don't have these molds, you could put them directly onto the uh, freeze dryer tray and make one big block. And then after everything is done, slice that block up. Uh, but this is going to be how we go about it for now, and um, yeah, let's just go ahead and press on with the process. And uh, this might go in a little bit uh, messy initially. We're going to just kind of scoop it in there, not worrying about the mess. And if you've got the stuff the right consistency, what you can do is just kind of press it down into the molds or give the molds a little bit of a jiggle and um, it will hopefully kind of flow a little bit into the uh, mold shape and uh, fill in all the nooks and crannies but uh, it really doesn't matter I don't think the dog will care if 
it can read the Ohio State logo or not, <laughs> but uh, it will just help us uh, have it in uh, good uh, bite-sized chunks or serving-sized chunks for the dog. Now, the other thing you could do is uh, you could use ice cube trays for this. I don't know if you would want uh, a full-size ice cube, but uh, I know you can also buy ice cube trays in different sizes. So more of a medium size rather than a large size ice cube might work out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead with this and uh, we'll come back after these are all ready to go into the freezer. And here's a quick shot of all of the molds uh, completely filled before they go into the freezer. Um, after filling them, I did go behind with a damp paper towel and just kind of wipe and clean up the extra stuff. And uh, the other thing that I did was kind of uh, tap these down on the countertop to uh, kind of fill in any air voids that might be uh, uh, down below there. Uh, since there are liver chunks in there, I fully expect there may be some air gaps in there. But for the most part, everything came out real good. So into the freezer with these, and then uh, after they freeze overnight, uh, tomorrow they'll go into the freeze dryer. So uh, uh, we'll come back when I pop these out of the molds before I put them into the freeze dryer. So you can see what they look like then. Okay, so here we are the next day. And um, we're going to go ahead and pop these uh, uh, dog treats out of the silicone molds. So it's just a matter of uh, squeezing them with your thumb and they pop out. And uh, you see that uh, these do make some pretty nice looking uh, dog treats. And uh, so we'll go ahead and just pop all of these out. Uh, get them on the tray and ready to go back into the uh, freeze dryer and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to get that started and and we'll have a happy puppy here in uh, probably about 24 hours is the time it's probably going to take to uh, get these treats freeze dried so uh, i'm going to go ahead and do this and uh, uh, we'll be back shortly when it's ready to go in the freeze dryer these uh, molds uh, pop right back in. I don't know if you've had a chance to use them, but uh, they tend to deform when you pop the treat out, but it's just a matter of popping them back in, and uh, we can throw these into the dishwasher and uh, clean up any of that uh, debris left behind from the sweet potatoes in the liver. Okay, here we go. We've got three trays of our uh, dog treats. And they, I think they came out looking pretty nice. Uh, these seem to be a real good size right here. And the pumpkin filled in the uh, mold shape very well. Uh, these ones right here are a little bit smaller. But I think that they'll be uh, just fine for our intent. And our dog is a girl. So she probably will like the flower shapes. And uh, these right here, these were the Ohio State uh, Jello molds. And uh, they came out a little bit on the large size, but our dog is a, a large dog. She weighs 70 pounds, so uh, every now and then when she's a real good girl, maybe she'll get a bigger bite. Now, uh, these were a little bit rougher on the bottom. I wasn't able to smooth it out as much, so they don't uh, lay flat, but eh, it, it doesn't matter. It's a dog treat. I think it'll be just fine for our all intents and purposes, uh, what it's meant for. So... Uh, these will go back in the freezer until the freeze dryer is ready to go. Um, over here is my freeze dryer and I've got it uh, currently uh, cooling down. Uh, uh, normally you have to wait about 15 minutes before it cools down enough to uh, uh, load the food into the chamber here. Uh, but uh, we're all ready to go and uh, once the chamber is cooled down we'll go ahead and uh, get those in there and like I said it's probably going to take about 24 hours before they're uh, uh, done and uh, ready to be taste tested by the puppy. Okay I have our three trays of the pumpkin dog treats up top and I had some leftover bean with ham soup in it so I went ahead and threw that in the bottom most tray there. So we'll go ahead and close her up and start the cycle. Let her rip, so it's on the way. 
So we'll come back after this is done and uh, we'll go ahead and see how it turns out and we'll do a taste test. Okay, you can see the process has now completed. Uh, it ran about 24 hours and 40 minutes. Uh, now, it did actually uh, complete the dry cycle time earlier, but uh, due to my work schedule, I added some additional time so that the uh, food would uh, continue with the drying process until I was done with work. So now that I've completed work, I'm going to go ahead and take this out and uh, well, we'll see how it came out. Okay, I've uh, taken the uh, dog treats out of the freeze dryer and I've packaged them up in our Mylar bags, added the oxygen absorbers in there and so now it's just a matter of sealing those up with the uh, uh, heat sealer. Uh, of course there is one other thing that has to be done, we have to taste test it and uh, so I did leave a couple of them out here. Now because these dog treats were made with things that uh, we know what's in here, we know it's pumpkin liver and beef broth. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's not bad. Um, I mean, it tastes like pumpkin. I don't taste the liver at all, but the, the, uh, because we know everything that's in here, we know that the ingredients are good and safe for humans, then you can eat it too. I'm not going to eat any more. It wasn't bad, it wasn't great, but let's go see what the dog thinks of it now. And now for the big test. Uh, will she like these or will she not? Uh, this is our dog. This is Lagatha. She was uh, named after Lagatha on the TV series um, Vikings. Uh, Lagatha was the Viking queen. So you want it? You want it? Okay, here you go. Well, that didn't take very long. You want another one? Yeah, you want another one? Well, it looks like uh, she definitely likes those, so I would say it's probably a hit. Yep, they're gone. Okay, that's all. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good girl. So I would say that uh, taste test was successful. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this and think you'll be able to put this to use, uh, please like, share, and uh, come back and uh, watch more of my videos. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Jim with Jim Jenny Ohio. And take care and have a happy new year.